the pelican. Most people have heard of a pelican, but how many know of the pelican? It's a peculiar bird, found off the west coast of Ireland and nowhere else. Fascinating thing about pelicans is that they only come ashore on Wednesdays. Don't ask how these birds know it's Wednesday. Scientists have long given up wondering how a simple seabird could follow a calendar. But one thing is clear. Pelicans choose Wednesdays to scour the coastline for their only source of food. The haughty fish of Kerry. The haughty fish of Kerry is, as its name suggests, a proud and supercilious beast which looks down on every other living creature. A fisherman who finds one in his nets is sure to throw it back. They can't stand the way the fish looks down on their humble profession. My uncle Omani, a fine seaman, but for his being short-sighted and crashing his boat into every rock in Dingle Bay, would often say on catching a haughty fish, Throw the blessed creature over the side. They make me feel ashamed to be casting a net. Throw it overboard before I throw myself overboard in mortification. To this day, many of the older Kerry fishermen will go to confession after catching a haughty fish. One look from that slippery creature will make them feel they've committed a mortal sin. It must be this look of overwhelming superiority and disdain which drives the pelicant to single out the haughty fish as its only prey. The attack is ferocious, usually with a baseball bat or mallet, sometimes devastating an entire shoal, as pelicants must bludgeon enough fish to last from one Wednesday to the next. Imagine then, my astonishment when one Thursday, whilst walking the Kerry shoreline with my uncle O'Mahony in search of the washed-up remnants of a boat he'd lately crashed, we stumbled across a pelicant stalking its prey. The haughty fish and pelicant are found only on the most secluded of beaches. It was on just such a section of the coast that my squinting uncle had recently smashed and sunk his boat. As we clambered round a towering formation of rocks and combed the tides for salvage, we stumbled upon a large pelican. Baseball bat raised high in the air. He was tiptoeing after a shoal of haughty fish that had obviously just clambered ashore. For those who haven't seen the photographs, I should perhaps describe a pelican as they are a little different from their cousin, the pelican. They don't have a large, deep bill like a pelican, but keep all their fish in a carrier bag marked mine. Also, a pelican has three legs, so that it can still function should an over-exuberant swipe of its bat miss and smash one of its kneecaps to smithereens. The plumage is exotic a preposterous bright green tartan, sometimes hidden by a grey mackintosh when it rains. Its long neck has a knot in it instead of wearing a tie. A furry flying hat and goggles round off the bird's exceptional appearance. And of course, this is only the male. The female is quite different, resembling a pelican in almost every respect except in mating season, when she turns fluorescent pink and hits the male pelican with her baseball bat until he agrees to build a nest. So there I was, frozen to the spot, watching a large male pelican stalking its prey. In a small shoal, the haughty fish were hopping over rocks and shingle to their seasonal picnic areas beneath the cliffs. The only time the haughty fish come out onto dry land is to picnic, and this is when they are at their most vulnerable to attacks from the hungry pelican, who can't easily swing a baseball bat under water. I was so astonished to see the pelican in mackintosh and flying hat tiptoeing on three legs after the shoal of haughty fish that I rashly shouted out, But 
it's Thursday. The haughty fish, hearing my exclamation, turned. In one awful moment, their expressions made me feel like I was the most shameful being on earth. I burst into tears. My uncle fell to his knees and said, I'll never do it again, whatever it is I've done. The pelican, however, gave a blood-curdling squawk and set about the fish with his baseball bat. The bat smashed down repeatedly amongst the fish, sending picnic baskets flying into the air. The bird tried in desperation to whack its dinner on the head, but the haughty fish, forewarned by my imprudent shout, flipped acrobatically into the air and escaped. When every last one had plopped back into the waves, the pelican turned to me with a very angry expression. Who asked you? But it is Thursday, I maintained, a little apologetically, as I myself would hate to lose my dinner, especially on Thursdays when it's shepherd's pie. I thought pelicans only hunted on Wednesdays. Isn't that so, uncle? To be sure, it would be turning all of nature on its head for a pelican to hunt any other day. The pelican suddenly looked very depressed and sat down droopily on a rock. The poor bird started to cry. Tears dripped over its bill and plopped into a rock pool. I'm terribly sorry, I said. No matter, no matter, it sniffled. You weren't to know. For years, for centuries even, the pelicans have been hunting hearty fish on Wednesdays. But recently, the clever little fellows have copped on to the days of the week. The boat went down with the calendar on board and they got one of the crew to read it before he drowned. For a good while now, they've not been picnicking on Wednesdays at all. We pelicans have had to adapt to survive. Change aeons of evolution, and hunt on Thursdays, Saturdays, Fridays, any old day just to eat. It feels all wrong. Lots of us have starved to death rather than bash a hearty fish on Saturday. A pelican can eat any day of the week. But a penny can't, can't. I don't know what I'm going to do. My plumage is losing its sheen. My Macintosh is going shabby. If this goes on, pelicans will die out. It was a sad thought. Yet another pointless extinction. First the dodo, then the passenger pigeon. The pelicans seemed doomed. Well, couldn't you eat something else? I asked. Like what? It said, dropping the bat and putting its wings over its head in a gesture of hopeless resignation. Well, I don't know. Crisps? Chocolate digestives? Ham and pineapple pizzas? It was then that my uncle, a thoughtful man with a good head on his neck, spoke up. There's only one answer, Mr. Pelicant. You have to hunt the hearty fish. That tis clear as bottled water. If ye go hunting chocolate digestives with them big heavy bats, you'll break them into all manner of crumbs. So my idea is this. Change every day of your week to Wednesday, except Wednesday itself. You can call that one day, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. The pelican brightened. Six Wednesdays a week, it said, eyes gyrating greedily. It's better than six Sundays, that's for sure, my uncle replied. You'll have fresh, hearty fish whenever you care to raise your bat. Your bag, marked mine, will be bursting. That's mighty stuff you have between your ears, sir, the pelican squeaked. He'll be the very saving of us for you will. Well, so I would, said my uncle, suddenly grabbing the pelican by its knotted neck. So I would, ye poor brain blighted bird, if Thursday wasn't my only day for hunting pelicans. The pelican squawked and squawked in Uncle's mighty, hairy handed grasp. The bird's mackintosh flapped in panic, and his three legs kicked empty air. My uncle turned to me. See, boy, tis said there's more good eating on a pelican than any bird in the world, and but for my only hunting them on Thursdays. I'd have eaten one before now, as they only came ashore on Wednesdays. You put them in the pot, 
and they turn into the finest meat and gravy you could taste. Their heads is full of spuds and seasonal vegetables, and their legs chopped up if you stew them with a bit of pachin and sugar. A rich man's rhubarb. Forget us finding me smashed up boat. Let's get this bird home to your aunt and ready for the pot. My uncle Omani would have brained the bird for dinner there and then, had not a large fluorescent pink pelicant slipped from behind a rock and whacked uncle over the head with her baseball bat. She squawked. But the pelicant is going nowhere, mister, till he's finished building me a nest. Uncle slumped to the ground, comet circling before his eyes. A lump grew on his head like a little hill. Wings on her hips. The female pelicant blasted her husband. Come on, ye lazy good for nothing. You've a nest to finish by this evening unless you've forgotten. I was surprised to hear the male roar back, despite his recent narrow escape. As hard I am to you, isn't it? A fetcher of twigs and fish. Drop your stupid eggs into the sea or a frying pan for all I care. Arguing loudly, the two pelicans unfurled their wings and swooped up and over the incoming waves towards the horizon. I watched them fade into specks, baseball bats clutched in their triple claws, carrier bags hooked over their bills. Then, pleased to have played my part in saving such a noble and exotic bird from certain extinction, I turned to offer my groaning uncle some assistance. In fact, nothing but good came from the episode, for when my uncle came round, he thought he was a bank manager. He changed his profession and never went near the sea again, which saved him a small fortune in boat repairs. My aunt thanked me and said she'd been hitting uncle over the head for years, but that had been with a pan, and where could she get one of them bats in case there was a relapse? I suppose the only creatures who weren't entirely happy were the haughty fish. But then, after the contemptuous way they'd looked at me when I'd shouted, It's Thursday, and saved their lives, I wouldn't be sorry if every last one of them ended up eaten. Like our three-legged friends, the pelicans, I don't care to feel inferior to a blasted fish. <laughs>